a member of Parliament for the Northern Territory for a total of 23 years, almost a quarter of a century. A third of the Territory's people are Aboriginal. Why, after all these years, is there unchanging, shocking poverty wherever you look? A hard question to answer in short. Uh, I think there are a combination of issues, one of which is some legacy issues, uh, which revolve around very poor government policy for, well, 50 years at least. I mean, I've been making films on Indigenous Australia for as long as you've been a politician. And to be shocked all over again is, is quite an experience. And what people have told me over the years are sets of excuses. Uh, in the context of health for which I'm responsible and have been responsible now for a number yeah. of years, three years, uh, we've had massive interventions which will address many of those issues. We've got significant policies, very good policies, addressing chronic disease management. These policies have been introduced by this government since 2007 and they are making a significant difference. There was no significant difference for one Aboriginal man who died during the night I was staying in his community. The next morning, his family and his small tin shack were gone. When an Aboriginal person dies, their home dies too. On the night I was there, a man called Mr. Davy, aged just 47, died of a heart attack in his humpy about 20 metres from the clinic. They couldn't save him. With all the equipment they had and all the expertise they had, and it was made clear to me that they couldn't save him because this man probably had, as a child, rheumatic heart disease, which is the highest recorded, has the highest recorded rate in the world. Which is why we're investing in the primary health care to try and ensure that these young kids, the next generation of kids, don't have their father's problems. And that's what we're doing. And I'm proud of what we're doing. Well, I'm glad you're proud. I just couldn't see evidence well, of anything you, well, of in these, in these did communities. You talk, well, hang on, you talk to the doctors. Ring the doctors up after. Yes, I've talked to the doctors. And did the ta doctors tell I you what I talked to one doctor, doctor. One doctor I talked to, she, I didn't expect her to say what she said. But she you, compared the conditions with 19th century Dickensian in England. She said, in that time, there was rheumatic heart disease. That's right. I talked to another doctor who but, reminded, reminded me that Australia is on a United Nations shame list as having not conquered trachoma, which even poor countries like Sri Lanka and did have she, conquered. And did she tell you about the investments we're making in trachoma right now? Yeah. I'm not proud of the past. I'm certainly not proud of the past. What about the but present? What, what I am proud of is... You're proud of the present. I'm proud of the fact that we're... How, could any, how could any Australian, and I'm an you, Australian, you walk into those could communities and say they're proud? Could you let me finish? I'm proud of the response this government's made to what is a very poor set of circumstances for Aboriginal people, not only there, but in other communities across this country. And I won't have it from you that we're not committed to doing, making those changes. And I won't have it from you that we're not investing those resources. I'm, and you need to know reason, a bit more about me than you currently do, I might say. The questions, Mr Snowden, for two reasons. One, you're the Minister of Indigenous Health. And two, you've been the representative of some of the poorest, sickest people in Australia for 23 years. Why haven't you fixed it? Oh. Hmm? What a stupid question. What a stupid question. What a puerile question. Did y'all hear that?